This video is one in a series on hereditary cancer, which is the reason that some families have an unusually strong pattern of cancer that's passed down through the generations. I'll talk to you about genetic counseling. Genetic counselors are experts in inherited diseases. Most genetic counselors have a master's degree that specializes both in genetics and in working with families. Most importantly, this video is about you and how you can use your family history to learn more about the chances of developing cancer and steps you can take to prevent cancer or catch it early. Let's start by talking about cancer. As we get older, we're exposed to things in our environment and in our lifestyle, and some of us will develop cancer. You may know someone in your family who's had cancer, or you may have had cancer yourself. When we have a family history of cancer, it's natural for us to wonder how that affects us and whether it increases our chances of developing the disease ourselves. It's important to know that most cancers are what we call sporadic cancers. These are isolated cases of cancer that are caused by aging and lifestyle and environment, but not by genetic risk factors. People who have sporadic cancer in their families have an average chance of getting cancer themselves and can follow the usual recommendations for cancer prevention and monitoring. A smaller group of families have what we call hereditary cancer. In these families, there is a strong inherited risk factor for cancer, and this is stronger than lifestyle and environment, although lifestyle and environment are still important. Hereditary cancer is not common but it's important to find these families because some people in the family have a higher chance of getting cancer. And while that can be difficult news to hear, it's information we can use to offer people medical care that can help them prevent cancer or catch it early and do their best to stay healthy. We have two tools that we use to find families with hereditary cancer. The first tool is family history. The types of information that are helpful are who in the family has had cancer, what kind of cancer they had, and how old they were when they developed cancer. Another tool that we have to find families with hereditary cancer is genetic testing. Genetic testing is done on a blood sample or saliva sample to look for inherited risk factors. It's important to use both family history and genetic testing together because each of them gives us different kinds of information, and by putting them together, we can have the most accurate picture of someone's chances of getting cancer. Let's take a closer look at family history in families with sporadic cancer and in those with hereditary cancer. In families with sporadic cancer, we're more likely to see cancer happening at later ages. There usually are few people in the family who've had cancer, and the types of cancer in the family may be all different kinds. In families with hereditary cancer, we're more likely to see cancer happening at young ages. There may be multiple people in the family who've had cancer, and we'll sometimes even see people who've developed more than one kind of cancer themselves. In families with hereditary cancer, we tend to see people getting the same kind of cancer or types of cancer that we know are related to each other, like breast cancer and ovarian cancer or colon cancer and uterine cancer. Another thing that we sometimes see are rare cancers like ovarian and fallopian tube cancer or breast cancer in men. While very few families have all of these features, when we see some of the features of hereditary cancer, genetic testing can help us get more information. As you may know, we inherit from our mother in an egg and our father in a sperm a complete set of genetic information for how our body will grow and develop. There are thousands of different genes, and each gene is a set of instructions for something specific. We have genes for things we can see on the outside, like how tall we are or our hair color, and genes for things on the inside, like how our heart works or how our bones develop. The genes that we look at in hereditary cancer are called tumor suppressor genes. Tumor suppressor genes have a normal job in our body, which is helping to control how our cells grow and protect us from developing cancer. You can think of a tumor suppressor gene like a stoplight. We have two copies of each tumor suppressor gene, one from our mother and one from our father. Examples of tumor suppressor genes are the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes involved in hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. In families with hereditary cancer, one of these important tumor suppressor genes is not working properly. The technical word that we use for this is a mutation. 
A good analogy is making a spelling mistake in a set of instructions. A spelling mistake in the instructions is the same as a mutation in a tumor suppressor gene. The body can't use that information anymore to protect us from getting cancer. Someone who has a mutation in a tumor suppressor gene does not automatically develop cancer. In fact, most of these people will not get cancer for many years or maybe never at all. That's because we have two copies of each of these genes and the copy from the other parent can still work to protect us from getting cancer. While I've been using the term hereditary cancer, it's more accurate to say that people with a mutation in a tumor suppressor gene have a hereditary predisposition to cancer. This is a long way of saying that they have a higher chance of developing cancer than other people. We don't do genetic testing just to tell people that they have a higher chance of getting cancer. We do genetic testing to find people who have a higher chance of getting cancer so that we can offer them options for cancer monitoring and cancer prevention that are specific to them. Let's spend a little time talking about some of the options that are available to people. One of these options is extra monitoring. People with hereditary colon cancer can start colonoscopies at earlier ages and do them more often. People with hereditary breast cancer can start doing breast MRIs in addition to mammograms and breast exams. These tools can help catch cancer at early stages. We also have tools for reducing cancer risk, including medications that lower cancer risk, such as birth control pills, which lower ovarian cancer risk. Another tool for preventing cancer is risk-reducing surgery. This is surgery to remove a part of the body that has a high chance of getting cancer. There's not one tool or one plan that's going to be right for all people. A genetic counselor can help you look at your family history and genetic test results, as well as talk to you about what's important to you at each stage in your life to develop a plan for you for lowering the chances of getting cancer or lowering the chances of having complications from cancer. I want to finish by talking about some common misconceptions about hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. One of these misconceptions is that hereditary breast and ovarian cancer can only come from the mother's side of the family. In fact, we know that hereditary breast and ovarian cancer can come from the father's side of the family, so it's important to look at the history on both sides. Another misconception that people have is about the cost of genetic testing. For people who have family history of cancer, insurance companies will often cover the cost of testing. For people who don't have insurance coverage for genetic testing, the cost of testing has gone down dramatically in recent years. And for people who don't have insurance coverage for testing and are not able to pay for testing, there is financial assistance available in some cases. Another misconception people have is that they assume that they must be at high risk of cancer if they have a family history of the disease. As you remember, many cancers are actually sporadic, and even in families with hereditary cancer, people will have a copy of the tumor suppressor gene that is working fine. If we imagine that this is a mother who has a mutation in a tumor suppressor gene when she has children, she only passes on one copy of this gene because the other copy comes from the father. Sometimes she'll pass on the copy of the gene that has the mutation, and sometimes she'll pass on the copy that does not have the mutation. That means that even in a family with hereditary cancer, about half of the people will not inherit the mutation that is causing cancer. Genetic testing can help find these people who are not at high risk, even though they have a strong family history. The last misconception I want to talk about is insurance discrimination. When genetic testing started many years ago, people worried about how insurance companies would use the information. Since that time, many laws have been put in place on the state level and federal level that prevent health insurers for you from using genetic test results against you. I hope that this video was helpful to you in learning more about how family history and genetic test results can be put together to help you choose options for cancer monitoring and prevention that are unique to you.